New 2024 polls show Trump can win New York, a state that hasn't gone red since 1984, with Kamala Harris now on track to become the worst performing Democrat in the Empire State in nearly 40 years. Today, we'll be taking a look at this new data from New York and the 2024 electoral map if the state does indeed become competitive. We'll start off by looking at this poll from New York. It was conducted by Siena College, which is one of the best pollsters out there. They do a lot of their polling with the New York Times, and it shows Kamala Harris at 52%, leading Trump by 12 percentage points. Now, at first glance, this may seem good for the Harris campaign, but if you adjust for the weighing of Democrats, Republicans, and independents, you'll see that this poll heavily overestimated Democrats. According to this Siena poll, they polled 49% Democrats, 25% Republicans, and 21% independents when the true weighing of voters from New York is more of an even split, with Democrats having a narrow advantage. And so after weighing these numbers, you see Trump at 48, Harris at 49. Harris's 12-point lead drops to just 1%, very well within the margin of error. This is not the first time that polling has heavily overestimated Democrats either. Joe Biden was supposed to win the state by 29.4%. In most of October, he was supposed to win by over 30. And this wouldn't have been seen as too unreasonable, as even Hillary Clinton was able to carry New York by nearly 23 points. Obama won it by 28 in 2012. As the country gets more polarized, we should be seeing these solid blue states, which New York traditionally has been, moving more and more to the left. But that simply didn't happen. When the entire country swung to the left from 2016 to 2020, Joe Biden barely improved off of Clinton's performance four years prior. And so coming back to the poll, Kamala Harris leads by 12 points, but this is a very skewed sample. If we adjust for the air from 2020, which was around six to seven points, her 12-point lead immediately drops down to just five. If New York is decided by tw five points, it would spell a disaster for Kamala Harris and the Democratic Party. This would make the Empire State more competitive than states like Texas and Florida. Florida, which was decided by a tilt margin, just two election cycles ago. In fact, Donald Trump might even be able to win in North Carolina and Georgia by larger margins than Harris will in New York. And so to see the map in a scenario where the state really does become competitive, I'm going to start off by filling in the solid states for both candidates. If New York is that close, she's obviously not going to win Washington and Oregon by 15 points or more. Really, the only states that she's going to carry by solid margins are just going to be California, Hawaii, as well as a handful on the Northeast, Vermont, Massachusetts, Maryland, the District of Columbia, and then the first District of Maine. While for Trump, he is easily going to win in Utah, Wyoming, Idaho, Montana, North and South Dakota, nearly all of Nebraska, along with Kansas, Oklahoma, Missouri, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, Kentucky, West Virginia, Indiana, South Carolina, Alaska, the second district of Maine. And in this scenario, we are also going to include Iowa, which is slightly more conservative than Ohio. I still see Ohio going to Trump by a double digit margin, but I do have it as just under 15 if New York becomes especially competitive. Iowa, though, this state has been itching to become a solid red for a very long time now. It is generally more to the right than the Buckeye State. And so in this scenario, I do have Trump carrying the state by a solid 15-point margin. And before we get into the competitive states, we're also going to look at the other polls that have been released in New York. So the most recent one that we looked at was this one at the very top from Siena College. This is the most recent poll from the Empire State. Harris leads by 12 percentage points. Now, you will see that a poll from ActiVote a few weeks ago had Harris leading by 17. That's pretty good, but that is the best poll she has seen throughout the 2024 election cycle. The previous Siena College poll, this poll was conducted right after Kamala Harris entered the race as the presumptive Democratic nominee. She led by 12 points, the exact same margin as today. So over the last two months, she has not improved at all in a solid blue state. And the reason why she had to improve was because of just how poorly Joe Biden was doing before he dropped out. If you look at the Siena College poll from June, Biden led by just 8%. In fact, there were three polls in a row with the incumbent president leading by less than 10 points in a state that he won by 23 just four years prior. The drop-off for Democrats here really has been kind of insane. I mean, last time around, this was a state that there wasn't any talk about. New York was as blue as a state really could get. And then when the results came out, people were surprised as to how close it was, even though Biden 
Biden won by a pretty big margin, although everybody expected him to win by significantly more. And then today, the polls are telling us that Democrats aren't even going to win by a solid margin. In fact, over the past year, there have only been two polls that have shown Democrats ahead by 15 points or more. We have this recent poll with Harris up by 17 and one poll back in May that had Biden leading by 19. This was before that disastrous debate performance. And so New York is probably only going to get more competitive from here. We've seen Kamala Harris make no improvements over the last two months in her support. And as New York becomes more competitive, other states are going to follow, especially in the Northeast. We also have a very competitive election in New Jersey as a result of the scandal perpetrated by Senator Bob Menendez. And so before we continue filling in this map, 83% of you guys are not subscribed. So please take the time to subscribe right now for more content like this leading up to the election in November. And join my Discord server to chat with me personally. Link in the description below. And so we're now going to fill in the likely states for both parties. These states will go either candidate by between 7 to 15 points. Kamala Harris is still going to win in states like Washington, Oregon, and Illinois, as well as many of these northeastern states, Connecticut, Rhode Island, and Delaware. While for Trump, he's the obvious winner in Ohio. He's going to win this state by around 10 to 15 points. He is going to absolutely dominate. Ohio used to be very competitive, especially a decade ago. In 2012, Obama won it by 3% against Mitt Romney, despite winning 332 electoral votes. But then when Trump won the election, he won Ohio by a much larger margin, despite only winning 306 electoral college votes. So Ohio has taken a sharp turn to the right. In fact, in both Iowa and Ohio, they both reelected their governors in 2022 by solid margins. And yes, their governors were both Republican. So looking at this map, Ohio and Iowa are now essentially free states for the GOP. In 2016, they were considered highly competitive. They were also pretty competitive back in 2020. But today, there's no doubt these are states that will 100% go in favor of the former president. We also have a Florida and its 30 electoral votes. Again, a state that used to be in the very middle. In fact, it was decided by a tilt margin in both 2012 and 2016. But in 2020, Trump surprised everyone and did a lot better than what the polling was saying. He was on track to lose Florida based on the polling data, but instead he won and he did it even better than he did against Hillary Clinton. And so now, like Iowa and Ohio, Florida is not competitive. These are essentially 30 free electoral votes going for Trump that were very much in play four years ago that definitely are not anymore. We also have Florida, a traditionally red state, although it generally is moving to the left but it'll take Democrats a very long time to flip the millions of voters that they need to convert in order for them to actually win the Lone Star State. Texas remains one of the most conservative in the entire country, and it's easily going to vote for Trump for a third time in a row. Next up, we have the lean states, which will be decided by margins of two to seven points. These are going to be among the most competitive states in the country, and this is where I would realistically place New York. Kamala Harris is still the favorite to win the state as a whole, but it is definitely going to be a lot closer than it usually is. According to Polymarket's 2024 election odds, Democrats have a 97% chance at holding on to the state. That might seem really good, but really this is just for who will be the eventual winner. As of right now, Democrats are still highly favored, but if New York gets competitive, which this betting market doesn't really account for very much, it is going to spell a disaster for Democrats in other states. If they can barely win in New York, how are they really going to do in states like New Jersey, Minnesota, Virginia or New Hampshire states that are much more centrist than a liberal stronghold like New York. And we have seen New York be very competitive in recent years. In 2022, the governor's election between Kathy Hochul and Lee Zeldin was decided by less than seven points. This was the most competitive gubernatorial race in the Empire State since 1994 and the weakest Democratic victory since 1982. In that same year, Chuck Schumer, the Senate Majority Leader, was re-elected by less than 15 points against Joe Pinion. This was also a pretty weak performance for Democrats as Chuck Schumer is the top Democrat in New York politics today, and he wasn't even able to win his race by a solid margin when in 2016, he won 70% of the vote. So New York Democrats really are falling apart right now. We also saw the resignation of Andrew Cuomo just a few years ago after Biden entered the White House. He resigned amid sexual harassment allegations, and then we had Kathy Hochul 
Vogel, who isn't any more popular as seen by her weak re-election victory in 2022. The only reason why she won was because she was a Democrat. And then New York City Mayor Eric Adams is performing poorly as well. He is currently under investigation. So really, Democrats have screwed up with their leadership in New York, and they are paying for it now. And so along with New York, I also have neighboring New Jersey as a lean blue state. Senator Bob Menendez is really screwing over Democrats there. The race is expected to be a lot more competitive than it's been in the recent past. We also have Colorado, 10 electoral votes. This state is still going to go to Kamala Harris. Joe Biden carried it by 13 points, but it is going to be a lot more competitive if New York really is decided by a lean margin. And as for the GOP, Trump is easily going to win basically every single swing state by two points or more. We have both North Carolina and Georgia in the Southeast. These races were very close last time. If New York is decided by a lean margin, there's no doubt Trump is going to win North Carolina for a third time in a row and flip it back the Peach State, which was the closest state in 2020. Arizona, the second closest state, is also going to go to Trump by a little over two points. Looking at both Georgia and Arizona's electoral history, the last time they voted blue before 2020 was back in the 1990s, 1996 for Arizona and 92 for Georgia. So fundamentally, they are still much more conservative than they are liberal. Joe Biden did well in 2020. Kamala Harris seems unlikely to replicate his success. In the silver state of Nevada, a state that no Republican has won since 2004, Trump is currently on track to flip the state, a state he lost by two points in both of the last two elections. And then up in the Midwest, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania are crucial for the Harris campaign, but if she can barely win New York, these three states are the least of her troubles. Three states that Joe Biden won the 2020 election with, these three states got him over the top, but back in 2016, Trump won all three of them. He flipped these states red for the first time in nearly 30 years, and that is how he was able to defeat Hillary Clinton. These states were very close eight years ago, this time around. I can see Trump winning by over two points in every single one of them, including Michigan, which generally is the most liberal out of the three in the scenario where New York is decided by a lean margin for Kamala Harris. And so at this point, Trump has already won the election. He's well over 270 electoral votes, but there are going to be a few more states he is going to be able to flip. All the remaining states will be decided by margins of two percentage points or less, so they will be categorized as being tilt. And so I'm going to fill in the second district of Nebraska first. I can definitely see Trump winning that back. We also have New Hampshire, a state that almost went red back in 2016. Hillary Clinton only carried the Granite State by 0.37%. It was surprisingly close. Nobody thought New Hampshire would even be remotely competitive, but it was, and this time around, if New York is indeed decided by a lean margin, there's no doubt Trump can flip New Hampshire. We also have Virginia, a state that Joe Biden won by 10 points just four years ago. Today, it is a lot more conservative than it was at the time Biden was elected. One year after Biden entered the White House in 2021, Glenn Youngkin became the governor. He defeated Terry McAuliffe, the Democrat, to secure the first statewide victory for any Republican in Virginia in over a decade. So generally, the state is shifting to the right, and it will certainly help Trump overcome the difficulties the Republicans have had in the state over the last 20 years. And finally, the last state I have going to Trump is Minnesota. This is Tim Wells' home state. He's the current governor and Kamala Harris's running mate. Biden won Minnesota by 7%. However, in 2016, Hillary Clinton almost lost the state, winning it by just 1.5. And so generally, along with the rest of the Midwest, Minnesota is shifting to the right. We saw back in 2012, nearly the entire entirety of the Midwestern region was blue. 2008, every single state was blue, including Indiana, but that is no longer the case. The Midwest is very competitive now, with states like Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Minnesota taking a hard turn to the right, as Sunbelt states generally are moving to the left. And so Minnesota, even though Kamala Harris is running with Tim Walls on the ticket with her, she is not invincible there. Minnesota is one of the most competitive states in the country, even though it hasn't gone red in 52 years. If New York is close, Trump could achieve a historic victory in Minnesota. And finally, in New Mexico and Maine, these are two states Biden won by near or over a 10-point margin. They were very blue in 2020. 
they're going to be less so in 2024, but I do still have Kamala Harris as the very slight favorite. And so this is the 2024 election map based on sort of a best case scenario for Donald Trump, highlighting the fact that New York is going to be a lot more competitive than it's been in previous cycles. At the very least, she is going to be the worst performing Democrat in the Empire State since 1988. And if New York does indeed go to her by a lean margin, Trump would be on track to win 340 electoral votes. Kamala Harris not even at 200. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe right now for more content like this leading up to the election in November, and follow me on Twitter for daily political updates. Link in the description below.